has been doing in your, uh, in your life. Amen. This is our last uh, Friday for this month of February. Happy Hearts Day. And indeed, we have so many things to give thanks to the Lord. I start with myself. I give thanks to the Lord for all the good things that he's doing in my life. I still have job. My family is uh, safe, covered, protected, not infected with uh, any uh, virus, provided to sustain all of his grace alone. All glory to me. Amen. Praise God, welcome brothers. Welcome family of Zoom. Uh, Lord, uh, we are indeed so grateful for the goodness that you are doing in this uh, family. Amen. Thank you for uh, our brothers and sisters from Uganda. Indeed, this family is a church of God, not only for Filipinos, but for all nations. Everyone is invited. Every nationality is invited. Amen. Praise God. So let's uh, proceed. Good evening, everyone. Hello, brothers and sisters. Uh, yeah, before I proceed with the uh, giving, also I would like to boast the Lord, thank the Lord for his, all his blessings, for his goodness in, um, in my life, in our lives, in my family. Uh, my family is well, they are so well. For providing us everything that we need. And of course, uh, God is with us always. To rebuke us whenever we, are, we feel we are not already aligned to His will, and that is how uh, we are so blessed. So now we are, we move now to the next worship, which is giving. My verse for tonight is from Mark 4, 26 to 29. The parable of the seed growing. I know everyone already has uh, heard and has read about this one, but um. This is a nice topic for the kids And he said, the kingdom of God is as the command to scatter seed on the ground. He slips and rises night and day, and seed sprouts and grows. He knows not how. The earth produces by itself, first the blade, then the ear, then the whole grain in the ear. But when the grain is ripe, once he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. So the kingdom, we are, uh, this is how the kingdom of God works. It, uh, we, are, we are going to um, follow the seed principle. And we can see from the very beginning when the, when the Lord um, commanded the earth to create it. To create herbs and plants, remember that God created by speaking to the ground to create herbs and trees. And he also created and he also commanded that the trees will be will reproduced by itself by producing a fruit uh, with seed to produce by itself. That's the how the Lord has created in the beginning. So he put in them fruit bearing, fruit bearing the seed that has the ability to produce its kind. God gave every plant and animal. He created the ability to multiply and replenish the earth through the seed principle so that he will not need to speak into them existence over and over again. So that's the reason why God has already um, uh, commanded the, uh, the, the fruits or the, the herbs, the plants, to have the seed and grow with itself so that he doesn't need to again over and over again to speak for a new uh, a new plant. Yes, things started as seed, actually. God promises a rock to the seed form that must, that must be planted. Otherwise, it abides alone. Remember in John 12, 34, except the grain 
of weight fall on the earth and die. It abides alone, but if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. So that is the seed activates and gives life to the promise. The covenant of seed and time and harvest will only be enforced the moment a seed is planted because the seed carries in it the power of spoken word to produce its kind. So this this is how uh, look at the seed that we need and to sow it. Why God has commanded the seed to produce its kind. Perhaps the last word the seed heard is grow, so that the seed does not know how to do it any other thing but to grow. Remember when you're a farmer, when you plant a seed, you don't need to check the, the seed every now and then, right? You have uh, it, it will uh, it will just grow by itself. So by, by knowing what seed you are planting, you will know which season they are going to be harvested, right? So the seed can be, let us, let us also um, try to check from ourselves, which seed are you going to, to, to plant? Your seed can be your, in, in, in um, spiritual realm, your seed could be your money, your time, your energy, your gifts, your talents, or your substance. Whatever it is, there is the need, the seed, uh, the seed, the ability to produce its kind when planted. So the point is, the seed must be planted. Amen? Amen. There is also a story I'd like to share to you. I know this is kind of a ridiculous story. There was a man who wanted to, to own a farm. So what he did, he, he bought a, like a hundred... Uh, Hundred hectare of land. He buys. He bought some tools. He pairs. Uh, he buy also some half half of himself because he wanted to to be a farmer for a living. And what he did the next day, he go. He went out. He wear his hat and he just seated and staring at his plant. Uh, staring at his land. So over and over every day, that's what he did. And later on, he was confused why. He doesn't have uh, plants, or there is no there is no harvest. Of course, it is very very obvious because he did not plant anything, so there is no plant yielding, right? So this the, this is the story where um, everyone should plant if you want to, to to expect something to grow in your life. You need to plant. If you need to plan for for your talent, you need also to. I mean, you need to harvest for more talent. You need more time, more more of your talent, more of your treasure. You need to plant them in your life. Friends, your seed is your harvest in your hand. It is in the potential state and can only be activated when planted. Consider a farmer who carries his seeds in a bag everywhere he goes. What do you think will happen to him? Remember, this. Uh, if you are plant, uh, if you are a farmer, you are. Um, um, spreading all the seeds, of course, those seeds will grow. Friends, know that the seed is, is your future, and what do you, what you do with it now will determine what becomes of you in the future. If a farmer chooses to eat all his harvest in a particular season without reserving any of the next planting season, what will happen? Of course, if you are if you are a farmer and if you are if you're looking for a future, you will not eat all your produce, but you will have to plant others. For your future, amen. So, if what you have in your hand is not enough to be your harvest, then convert it into seed for a desirable harvest. So, whatever you have now, whatever money or your time, your talent, whatever you have now, you can plant it for the future. Another point I would like to express based on the characteristics of a seed is that the quality and quantity of your seed will determine the quality and quantity of your harvest. Remember in scripture, 1 Corinthians 9, 6, he, he that sows sparingly shall reap sparingly, and that he sows bountifully shall reap bountifully. Also know that every seed was given a name so that the farmer can identify its harvest in the field. Of course, you need to know what plant are you going to plant so that you will know when that time it will be harvested. Adapt the habit, habit of naming your seed so as to know when the harvest comes. Sowing without naming it is like sowing without expectation to the seed. So finally, where is our seeds? 
consider a farmer sows a seed today and goes back every day to open and check the, the, the state of the, the seed. Of course, as a farmer, you're not going to plant now, then every day you're going to check. Because you know that it will, there is a time that it will grow and it will bear fruit, a time to harvest. So words are like water and the, uh, that waters are seeds. Stop destroying our harvest with negative confusion. So of course, when you plant, there is a, a trust. There is trust that it will grow and you will not entertain any negativity of it. Stop saying that uh, what you're seeing and start saying what you decide to see. Remember the worlds were framed by the word of God. So also frame your world by the words you speak. So now what seeds are you going to sow? Let us give to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord, thank you so much for the words. Lord, thank you, Lord, that um, you're giving us the, the sign of heart Lord to give because you give first. Thank you, Lord, um, for, the, uh, for providing us everything that you want us. And we give Lord, we start coming up to you. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Amen. So, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for uh, all the generous part that you have touched uh, today, oh God. Let us uh, all stand. Uh, it says in John 6, uh, verse uh, 63, The words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. Amen. Do you believe in that? Amen. That all the words that have been written in the scriptures are spirit. Amen. And if it's spirit, there's life. Amen. Amen. At this moment, uh, brothers and sisters, I believe that uh, the power of prayer. Amen. Amen. Let us all uh, rededicate ourselves to God, our families, before we uh, begin our praise and worship. Let us offer Him our whole families. Let us pray for uh, the whole nations. Let us pray for uh, healing and deliverance. Salvation of all our bloodlines, bloodlines of uh, only my great family and those families that the Lord has allowed to be connected to us. Let us uh, declare in uh, our prayers. Hallelujah. Let us all pray together. Lord, uh, we say to you, God, for uh, you have gathered us as your family, as one family, God. Lord, we will worship you in the spirit. Lord, as we uh, sing our praises and worship to you, Lord, we offer to you our service and living sacrifice. Uh, bless us, bless us, uh, purify us, and continue to sanctify us as individuals, church, and as your family. Lord, we pray and we pray that, that the living water, O Lord, will continue to flow in this uh, family, the body of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us continue to worship the Lord. <laughs>
Lord, you are worthy to hold the praises. You alone are our King. We always say hallelujah to the one who created us. Father, we thank you for gathering us today. We thank you, Lord, for strengthening us today. Lord, we thank you for opening our hearts to the words that you're going to deliver us today. Deliver to us today. Father, use me as a vessel of your word. Empty me. Empty my heart. If there is some area on it that is uh, have a selfish intention, please, Lord, take it away. Lord, we thank you for the open hearts. We thank you, Lord, for the ears. Lord, we thank you for your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let there be light. Then there was light. Praise, praise, praise. That's all I said in that music. Praise God. Ma, namili ni po ba? Can you? I'm sorry. Am I clear? Yeah, clear. I try to speak as calmly as I can to the people. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for the beautiful faces, for the happy and the joyful hearts we have. Do you feel hot? Yeah. Praise the Lord. The burning desire inside your heart. Last week, we have discussed the things that will happen or, or, or fall. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Last week, we, we started the discussion about uh, the, the letter or the epistles of Paul to Timothy. Actually, we're almost uh, there will be one more chapter. We're going to finish the second Timothy, and we're going to deal with the Titus next week, hopefully. Now, last week we have discussed about the character or the things that the people will have during the, or actually it's not the end times, but during these times, because it was predicted or it was prophesied by Paul a thousand years ago. Anyway. They Paul told us or teach us or telling Timothy that people will be what? Lovers of themselves. Lovers of money. Boastful. Proud. Abusive. Disobedient to their parents. And this actually is happening right now. Whether we, we admit it or not, I don't believe that well, for me alone, I'm speaking for myself. Of course, there will be how many? There will be some, of, not some, few, or I think one or two, which we have already experienced, or that, or we have already done ourselves. Amen. We are lovers of money. We're lovers of, our, of ourselves. We're boastful. We're proud. We're abusive, or I am abusive. Disobedient to the parents, but else ungrateful, unholy, without love, slanderous, without self control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, and conceited. These are the characters or the attitude that Paul was uh, telling Timothy that the people are going to act in later times, which is obviously. These are the things that we are experiencing or we are witnessing right now. Amen. Now, if Paul 
is telling Timothy, his pastor, that these are or this will happen in latter times or in later times, which we are experiencing today, there is a contrast. If I may borrow the word of um, Sister Emma last week, that's the meaning of contrast. <laughs> so there is a contrast. If Paul is teaching Timothy of the things to come, of course, there are things also that needed to be done. There are things as well that we need to do for us to be ready because of the things that is happening around us. Now, as Paul is teaching uh, Timothy, the last part of that is lovers of flesh rather than lovers of God. So the love of, of the people around us, if I may say, is now less than, or they love themselves first before God. And obviously, it is difficult to, to, to master the character of loving God first above all. It is not impossible because of the Holy Spirit that resides in us. Yes, it is difficult. I understand. Yes, it will take time. And yes, many times we are going to fall. Mind you, brothers and sisters, it's not about failing God. It's about every time we fall. Every time that we have failed God. Every time that we have forget that He is God and we are just His creator or His creation. Brothers and sisters, it's about standing up moving forward and staying focused to God. Amen. Now, 2 Timothy 3 verse 10 says, you talking to or talking about Timothy, however, know, uh, know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, faith, patience, love, endurance, persecution, sufferings, what kinds of things happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra. The persecutions I enjoyed, yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Why? Even doers and impostors will do go bad, will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. Now, but as for you, referring to Timothy, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it. And how from intimate or from infancy you have known the holy scripture, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scriptures is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be truly equipped for every good work. Hallelujah. Let's close our eyes. closing prayer. Now, aside from those 12, if I'm not mistaken, 12 or 13, they, the, the character of people will, and we are experiencing right now according to Paul, now we is, now he is teaching Timothy on how to handle those things. He said, you, Timothy, however, know all about my teaching. Know all or know all about my teaching. So that teaching is from Paul, uh, from Paul when they are together and when they are evangelizing. Amen. So Paul is trying to remind Timothy to remember all of his teaching, teaching of truth, truth that is written in the Bible, truth 
that is the work of God. People nowadays or even before or even us now have its own truth. Whatever we believe in, whatever we think that is right, whatever we think that is um, permissible or whatever we think that is beneficial to us, we thought it is right. And that is the truth. Since we believe that what we are doing is right, it will become true to your heart and to your mind. Amen. That's why even Paul is told before uh, or, or says that not all are, everything is permissible, but not all are beneficial. Now, if we believe something in our heart and in our mind that what we are doing is right, though it is a mistake, though it is a sin, though it is unrighteous, we will believe that that is the truth. Amen. That is why, and during this time, there are a lot of false teachers. That is why Paul is telling Timothy to know all about my teaching. Because we might believe that the things we are experiencing, or in our hearts we might, or in our mind we might thought that the things that we are um, uh, that we are experiencing is the truth. But the truth is what is written in the Bible, and the truth is the word of God, not the things that we are believing, not the things that we are seeing. Whether a lot of people is doing it or not, whether it is contrary to our feelings, whether it will cost us some sacrifices or sacrifices or relationships to others, what is true is true. Not the truth that we want to believe in. Amen. Now, Paul is also teaching Timothy my way of life. Know all about my teaching. Now, my way of life. We all knew how Paul lived his life. Praise be to God that he has given us the Holy Bible, which we are, which it is our manual of life, which gave us of the things that had happened before and the things that will happen in the future. Now, Paul is telling Timothy, live the way I live my life. In our Christian walk, whether we admit it or not, or whether we can answer this question or not, if someone will ask you, or is it possible for us with, 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 with uh, head up high, with a ready heart, can we tell someone to live the way I live? Just like Paul teach before or taught us before that imitate me as I imitate Christ. Do we have the courage? Do we have the heart to tell those people who don't know Christ if they ask you, what, uh, how does Christ live? Yeah, if your if your God is so amazing that you were that you were giving all your treasure, talent, and time to Him, but I don't know Him, can we? Do we have the courage? Do we have the heart to tell those people who don't know God that if you want to see God, look at my life or look the way I live? Amen. Because it's not about knowing His teaching. We might. Uh, we might be able to memorize the, the Bible. Praise be to God. We might be able to have a, a dozens of uh, videos or exhortations. With that we, we might have other references. Our songs will be full of other books referring to God. But if our love, uh, but if our life is not reflecting the word of God, then we are being deceived. Amen. My way of life. If we, hopefully, I pray and declare that each and every one of us will be able to tell someone to live your life the way I live 
my life. Not in the sense of financial status. Not in the sense of how you dust or how you do your work. Not in the sense of how you 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 are exerting your effort to one things. But you can tell someone that imitate me as I imitate Christ. A very Ano yung mabigat? Heavy! Statement that if we can just tell others, imitate me as I need. My purpose, most of the people don't know or ask me, is this really my purpose? What is my purpose in life? Am I just here in UAE to look for a job, work, save money, get rich, and travel? Am I only here in UAE to work, have money, have love life, marry someone, and have children? Am I here in UAE to send money to my, to, 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 to my family way back home? Am I here for, for much bigger, or am I here for the purpose. You might hear because God sent me here with a mission and with a vision given to me. Because if you don't have purpose in life, you might feel that you are useless. If we don't know why we are here, actually some translation says here, aim in life. What is your aim in life? Purpose in life? What do you think is your purpose in life? You are created by God with a purpose. We are still alive today because we have a purpose. You have a purpose. You might not be able to see it today. Because of the things that is happening around us. But believe me, the word says, the Lord says, our God says, I have set the end from the beginning. If you're just looking for a on, on the picture, God is have already finished it. Your life has already been set by God. So you have a purpose. You are here today. Because you have made purpose. You are here today because you are going to receive the purpose and instructions that God will give you today. Amen. You have a purpose. Tell your seatmates you have a purpose. Aim in life. You should aim for something in life. Aim. Aim. You have a purpose. Faith. Faith. Yes, we all have the same measure of faith. Because the faith that we have is from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But are we exercising it? Because as we all knew, faith is like just a muscle. If you go to gym every day, Bench press. I don't know any exercise. That's fine. If you are exercising the, your, your muscles, you, if you are uh, push up dumbbells and every uh, whatever is on the gym, right when you were running, you are making your muscle bigger and thin. Same is true with your feet. If, yes, we have the same measure of faith. We have the same number of muscles in our body. But some are bigger, some muscles are toned. Some are fat. Some are fluffy. Why? Because people, others, are taking care of themselves. Others are exercising their faith. Others are using it. Not only for themselves, but to glorify the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Have faith on Him. Actually, I know all of you have faith in Him. On him. But exercise it well. 
not just one set, not just a second set. We, we need to build our faith every day. And we, we all knew that in heaven, the monetary, o ang pera ginagamit natin doon is what? If you want to ask something from heaven, you have to have faith. Lord, I want a new job without faith. Faith is the one we're spending in heaven. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Amen? What else? Patience. Ha! Everyone and everybody needs it. Especially me. The word of the Lord, if you are being offended, let me clear about Let me be clear about it. If you are being offended, if you are being struck in your heart by the word of God, remember that I was struck first before you. Oh, my pastor is always uh, preaching about myself. Praise be to God. Because I am preaching also to myself. Faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. Before you have heard this, I already heard this. I already read and learn things before I release it. So before you are struck, I am already struck. Amen. Now, patience. We all need more patience every day. Patience to our colleagues. Patience to our boss. Patience to our family. Patience to the people around us. And most especially, we need patience to deal on our selves. I hate myself. I'm always like this. Na, 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 na. Yeah. <laughs> Praise be to God. Now, it will produce love. My way of life, my purpose, actually, faith, patience, and love should come in one package. Patience cannot be separated from your faith. As well as love. If you have love, you have patience. And you have faith. If you have faith, of course you're going to have patience as well as love. You know what? Because this tree is a character of our world. Patience, faith, and love. Endurance. Run the race. Endure the things that is happening around you. You, you. you know what? We need to endure things that is happening. We might be less. We might have less in life. We don't. We might. We we might not be financially stable. We not, we might we might not have a, a job security. We might not have things that we wanted in life. But we need to endure it. Why? Because sometimes it is not. Sometimes the victory that God is showing you. It's the endurance that you have. The time that you can bear those things that's happening to you. It's not, the victory is not just victory as you want to jump in because God has answered your prayer. Sometimes waiting and enduring things that is happening around you or to yourself is a victory. All of us here have experienced um, uh, Difficult times in our lives. Amen or amen? But still we are alive. Still you are here, praising the Lord. Why? Because endurance also is the way of God teaching us that you are victorious. Yesterday might be a bad day. Yesterday you are, you, you might be crying yesterday night. Asking the Lord, please Lord, answer my prayer. 
But God is teaching you something. God wants you to endure something. God wants you to endure for you to realize that enduring also shows victory. Amen? Persecution. We all knew that we are going to be persecuted and we are going to experience persecution. Why? Because from kingdom of darkness, we have brought to kingdom of light. From this world, we are on this world, but we are not on this world. this world. So from the worldly things, God has already taken us. Okay, before we are friend of this world. We don't have God in our life. I don't know you, but I do. I, I don't know the rules. I, I don't know what the Bible says. But when the Lord, when God has given you the, uh, given us or given me the opportunity to know Him, the privilege to serve Him, I was being sanctified and, and, and uh, set apart from the Word. So now, the people who used to be around me, the things that I used to do, now the devil is so angry at me. Why? Because before we were best friends. But now I hate him. So we will be persecuted in a sense that the people around us or the things that we used to do or we wanted to do, we are not doing it anymore. Those people who we so-called friends are going to persecute and judge us. Why? Because they will tell that, see, and they even call uh, born again a religion, which is very misleading. Amen? Sufferings. We will suffer one way or another. Whether we are going to, whether we like it. Endurance, persecution, <laughs> sufferings. We have suffered a lot of things. We have experienced difficulties in life. But in that suffering, one thing I can tell you, and I know you have experienced it, that the Lord never forsakes you. That the Lord keep you. That the Lord until this very moment, until this point, and up to this point, the Lord is going to equip you. There is always a purpose. There is always an aim in our life. We need patience, faith, love, endurance, so that in persecution, in suffering, we know what to do. Amen. Now, what kind of things happened to me in Antioch? You, you, you know why Paul is telling Timothy this? You know why the Bible is written, give, written and given to us? So that in those times, when we are, when we are being persecuted, when we are suffering, uh, when, when we need endurance, we all know that all these things are going to happen. In advance, God is telling us that this thing will happen to your life, persecution and, and, and suffering will happen in your life so that we will not be shocked. Oh, I am, un I am financially unstable. So, so you will not panic. Why? Because you have faith. And God has already told us that we are going to suffer. Amen? We might lose our job, but praise be to God for another job. These things will happen. That is why Paul is telling this to Timothy, so that Timothy will be prepared. So that also in our lives, we will be prepared as well. Amen. Now, what, what kind of things had happened to me in Antioch? Iconium and Lystra, the persecutions I endured, yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. We all knew what happened before. Acts 13 and 14. Lystra and uh, Iconium and Antioch. At first, Paul was in jail. Acts 13. Acts 14, he was in jail again because the people wanted to throw him out of the town. In Lystra, they stole Paul. 
Because Paul is uh, sharing the word of God, preaching the word of God. They thought that they killed Paul, but praise be to God. They left him outside the town, thinking that Paul is dead. Praise be to God. He, God rescued him. And now we're enjoying the privilege of knowing how we live for our Lord Jesus Christ. How we're going to live our life as well. The man who wrote the two-thirds of the New Testament. Amen? The next book. Now, in fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be, by now, will be persecuted. See? You want to live a life that's glorifying God? Then you will be persecuted one way or another. Persecuted by the people around you, persecuted by your families, persecuted by your by your co-workers, persecuted by the people around you who don't believe in Christ. But who cares? It will happen. But we must and we need to live a godly life. Because apart from him, we are nothing. Apart from our Lord Jesus Christ, we are nothing. And those who are married, I suggest to have a children as well. So we can have a children ministry and we can keep them together in one children. Praise be to God. Now, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. While evil doers and imposters will go from bad to worse. So there are people who will not be given or has been given a chance but choose to stay in darkness. Because see, while evil doers and imposters will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being Deceived. Praise be to God. You are being deceived. Open up your eyes. Stay on the light. You know why we need to be in light as always? So that things will be exposed. The things that is harming us. The things that will hurt us. The things that is, uh, or the things that uh, the devil is uh, stealing from us, it will be exposed. Stay in the light. Stay with Christ. Walk with Him. So that you will never be deceived. Know the truth. My people are perished because of lack of knowledge. But make sure that the knowledge that we are gaining is the truth and we are going to live by it. And we will try as much as we can, as much as possible to live by it. Amen? Now, but as for you, continue referring to Timothy again. Now, but as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of because you know those from whom you learned it. So aside from Paul, Timothy has learned something as well. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures. Let me remind you that Timothy's grandmother and mother is a believer of Christ. Timothy is an answered prayer. Priscilla, huh? and what's the name of the grandmother? I think it's here. Yeah. 
Anyway, Timothy's grandmother and mother is a believer of Christ. That's why Paul is telling him that aside from the things that you have learned from me, make sure that you will not forget as well the things that you have learned before. The Old Testament which has been passed to him and teached to him by his mother and grandmother. Eunice, Priscilla and Eunice. So that's why the things that we are learning every time we open our Bible, the things that we are learning every time we hear uh, some preaching, keep it in our heart. Let's try to live by it day, one day at a time. Amen? Because which are able, you see, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Praise to be to God. Brothers and sisters, things will happen whether we like it or not. We're going to experience things whether we are ready or not. We're going to be, as Paul is saying, we're going to suffer. We're going to be persecuted. But we need to endure. We need to continue the race that we have started for our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, it might be painful. Yes, the things that will happen to us might be things that we are not expecting to happen since we are a believer of Christ and we give ourselves to Him. But there is no excuses. The good thing about it is that we knew in our hearts and in our minds that we have our Lord Jesus Christ in ourselves. When we are crying, we knew that He's going to comfort us. When we are failing, we knew that He's going to lead us up. Know the truth. Live by the truth, whether it is true to your heart or not. But know that the truth from God is the only truth that we have. The Holy Bible is the manual of life. You don't know the things that need to be done? Read them. You don't know what to decide and which road to take? Read them. It is given to us for us to live a godly life. It is given to us because God wants us to be, uh, uh, He wants to strengthen us. God has given us His word for us to walk closely every day of our lives, aiming to be like Him. Your purpose is to be like Him. Your purpose is to do His will. Our purpose is to glorify His name. You might fail. I will fail because we're still a human being. We're not yet in a in a last stage of sanctification. Because the, the glory, the, the glory for the glory of sanctification. But come to think of it. You have God in you. The Holy Spirit resides in you. What's the worst thing that can happen? They were saying you might die, praise be to God, because death for us is just a start of a new beginning. You might be hurt, healing is provided. You might experience pain, it doesn't matter. My God is my comforter. You might lose something, who cares? My God is my provider. As long as we are focused and dedicating our lives to glorify His name alone and setting aside our own interest, praise be to God that He is the one who is the one, uh, He is the one who will lead our lives.
Amen. And let me close with this. All scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So as a servant of God, his word is teaching us, rebuking us, correcting us, giving us a training in righteousness so that us, as a servant of God, may be thoroughly equipped for every good word. Let's all stand. Yes. Lord, we thank you for equipping us. We thank you, Lord, for your word. Yes, we thank you, Lord, that uh, you are always beside us. We thank you, Lord, that you are the one who called us. You are the one who qualifies us. Lord, we might not be perfect, and you know it, but we know, Lord, that you are perfect. Lord, we might fail you, and we have failed you many times, but still, Lord, you never forsake us nor leave us. Lord, thank you for equipping us. Thank you for opening our hearts. Thank you, Lord, for embracing us. Thank you, Lord, that in our weaknesses, you are our strength. Thank you, Lord, that in, in, in the night that we are crying, Lord, you are our comforter. Thank you, Lord, that if we are lack of something, you are our provider. Lord, we thank you that you qualify the forms or the whole. Lord, bless my brothers and sisters. Bless them, Lord, that I pray and declare that all the physical, all, all the spiritual blessings will manifest on their physical life. Lord, I pray and declare with a red that you're going to, to, to ready and prepare their hearts for the things that you are going to give them, for the things that you have called them to do, to glorify your name alone. Father, if my brothers and sisters are sick, we release healing in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, if they are if they are sad or if they are in suffering, we release comfort in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, if there is hatred in their hearts, if there is unforgiveness on their hearts, we release peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We release love the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, today is your day. Today is the day that we're going to celebrate the goodness and the joy that you have already given us. Father, we thank you for the opportunity and for the privilege that you are always giving us to serve you and to glorify your name alone. Father, we love you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. night still the day of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, do you know already your purpose? Our purpose. And that is uh, to do the will of the Father. Amen. So uh, let us uh, raise our hands for uh, the final uh, blessing. Hallelujah. Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to the gospel and preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but has now been disclosed and through the prophetic writing has been made known to all nations, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen.
uh, Lord, uh, we thank you for uh, the gift of life that you have given to our society. Lord, we declare uh, abundance of blessings, not only to you, but uh, to the whole family, Lord. Lord, we thank you for pouring your uh, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your world, Lord, and for giving your always the time, Lord, to come and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Lord, uh, we declare uh, blessings upon blessings to your family, uh, to the work of God. Thank you for the provision, for sustaining all of that, and for protecting your own wish, oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Happy birthday to